And for our final story for this edition of the Rolling Stone, we are talking again about a beloved American icon, Captain America. Poor, poor Captain America. I mean, the poor guy has been through a lot. He has basically become a, not a cultural icon, but a cultural punching bag. All the abuse that that character has gone through within the past year, some of which we've actually talked about here on the channel before. He was turned into a Hydra agent. His main villain, the Red Skull, was turned into a not-too-subtle wink stand-in for Dr. Jordan Peterson. Uh, last time we talked about uh, they were turning him gay, or they were using the Captain America iconography for, the, uh, for an openly gay character that's going to be in some miniseries. And it's just been a mess. But people have been able to comfort themselves with the fact that, okay, that all might be happening. That's true. But that's all happening in the comics. And who reads comic books anyway? At least who reads the mainstream comic books from DC, Marvel, or any more even really Dynamite and Dark Horse? No, no, no. You do what you want in the comics. We've got the MCU Captain America right here, played by Chris Evans, and that's the authentic Captain America. Well, maybe once upon a time, but no more. John Podhoritz, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, had an op-ed in the New York Post this past week where he was talking about Marvel's, Marvel slash Disney's show, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is a, well, yeah, a sequel. It's a mini sequel to Avengers Endgame, which the pandemic has actually helped, I think, Marvel do this. Instead of actually having a movie sequel to Endgame, a lot of the shows that Marvel has been putting out and putting on Disney+, Plus because that's the only place you can watch those shows now, they have all acted as mini-sequels, but more mini-sequels for particular characters. So Falcon and the Winter Soldier, of course, is about uh, Sam Wilson, Steve Rogers' friend, and then the Winter Soldier, his old friend from World War II, Bucky. WandaVision was about what happened to the Scarlet Witch after the... Um, after Endgame, uh, Loki that's coming out, of course, now that Loki's alive again, it's going to be what happened to him. Well, John Porteritz was talking about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and he revealed that they have turned Captain America into a villain. He writes, quote, we, uh, let's see here. What of John Walker, the new Captain America? Because he's the one who has been given the iconography of Captain America now that, I don't really know, Chris Evans never was Captain America, or now he, for some reason, he's old because he went back in time and then came back the normal way, and so he can't be Captain America anymore. It's confusing. But anyway, what of John Walker, the new Captain America? He confesses to a friend that, quote, the things that we had to do in Afghanistan to be awarded those medals felt a long way from being right. He's calling himself a war criminal rather than a hero and says that becoming Captain America is important to him because it will allow him to do good at last. Then, ten minutes later, Walker uses his shield to beat a man to death in a public square. The symbolic meaning is clear. America is compromised at best and pernicious at worst. And John Walker is a more honest representation of the truth about the United States than Steve Rogers ever was. And Podhoritz makes this observation that 10 years ago, which would have been what? 2011. So the MCU was only three years old at the time. 10 years ago, this would have been unthinkable to actually put this into a movie or a show, especially to take a beloved icon like Captain America and to do it. It would have been... The, making this about Captain America would have been the extra twist after the knife went in. But now, but now, it is actually perfectly okay. There is absolutely... In fact, people 
feel like they have to make this sort of a story because now every all art of course can't just be art it can't it can't be art it can't even just be entertainment it must be propaganda so of course the story and the characters have to reflect whatever narrative we're being fed by the all tyrannical and omnipresent now which is of course that per the 1619 project america was always evil it will always be evil unless, of course, it is radically changed so that it is no longer the United States. And therefore, the show and the character of Captain America must reflect that. And there are two points that I wanted to make about this, gang. The first one is a simple practical point. If you have Disney+, Plus, get rid of it. Don't give another dime to Disney, to the Disney empire, the mouse has gone mal, pretty much. So that's the first and practical point. You know, buy the movies if you want. You know, buy the movies secondhand even. Find a secondhand store, go on to eBay or find, you know, some uh, third party video store or something that just sells used tapes. Make, you know, make sure that it's reputable. Make sure that, you know, you're actually getting a good, you know, like new product, even though it's used and buy the movies that way. Don't give Disney another dime of your money. So if you love the MCU, you know, buy the movies like that and then chuck Disney plus so that you're not giving them any more money. That's the practical thing that I wanted to bring up. The broader, more slash philosophical point is that this is important because this is what the 20th century historian and philosopher Eric Voglin called the corruption of symbols. Eric Voglin, his name has, uh, well, history hasn't been kind to it. Other names, of course, have kind of come up and supplanted his name in the mainstream. There are still plenty of people who talk about Vogelin and his writings, but he's become more of an academic uh, niche, I suppose. But he was genuinely one of the most intelligent people of the 20th century. Let me just give you an example. When he was 20, he had his PhD. And after he earned that PhD, he then did the equivalent of two more PhDs. The guy had brains, you know, coming out of his ears, practically. And one of Vogelin's main points was the corruption of symbols. He said that every society is structured around symbols, things that remind people of what is true and what is good. And in fact, he said one of the greatest uh, reminders of what is true and what is good, one of the greatest symbols, therefore, was the American Revolution itself, which is a very unique way of looking at the revolution as a symbol, as a reminder of people of what is uh, true and good. And so he said, Vogelin argued that losing symbols is not nearly as dangerous as symbols becoming corrupted. Because if you lose a symbol, well, then you simply maybe forget about it. And if you have, you know, more than likely, some other symbol will come to take its place. Because again, nature abhors a vacuum. But when symbols become corrupted, that is when things become perverted. Because the symbol is still there. So, for example, here, we still have the symbol of Captain America. But now the symbol, what he stands for, the messages and the meanings incorporated into the character, what you might even say the substance of the character himself, is being changed. So that now, even though it looks like the same Captain America, it's not the same Captain America. But it's being done in a sense, so smoothly within the storytelling genre that people might not even notice what's happening. Especially when, again, they, they've grown up with the MCU, right? This is just 
Of course the MCU isn't political. It's never been political. This is just good old-fashioned entertainment. So they're just doing this because they thought that it would make a good story. Vogelin says that it's very dangerous. When symbols are corrupted and when it's done in such a way that people don't even know that they're corrupted. Because of course, if we need the symbols to remind us of what is true and good, then if the symbol is changed then our mentality in relation to the symbol, and therefore our mentality regarding the nature of society, the nature of history, etc., etc., will change as well. We change. You change the symbols, you change not just the culture and the society and the country, but the people themselves. That was one of Vogelin's big ideas. And that's what's happening here. That's why they're investing so much time in, I'll just say it, perverting the idea of Captain America. Because Captain America, in a sense, is worth more uh, changed than he is dead to them. And on that note, gang, I am going to call that a wrap. So thank you for watching, as always. If you could, smash that like button, share it with your friends so that they can enjoy the episodes too. Have a great weekend, stay safe and stay free, and I will chat at you all real soon. Ciao.